So, Ms. Richard, do you have um, any history about the African Americans that lived on School Street? Do you know the people who lived on School Street? I knew them, but I don't have any history about only one. The groom's man, I had a place out there right across from the church. And he had a son that used to play the piano and they would have dances out there. Not, and they had a pavilion out there. And they, On School Street they had a pavilion? No, out there at the groom's place. Okay. Back in his backyard. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he would play that music and they'd go out there and dance. And we couldn't go though. Uh-uh, we had to stay home. We asked Mama one time, why couldn't we go someplace sometime? She said, no, because you belong right here. <laughs> and then in later years, that young man lost both of his legs that used to play that music. Lost both of them. And his sister had a stroke and she had to go to the hospital. And she called me one night and day. That's when I was going around taking care of people too. And she said, Etta, Gilly is home by himself. She said, now I wonder if you could go out there with him. She said, because he's by himself and he can't get out. I told her, okay, because then by that time I was married the second time. I went out there and I saw him. He was sitting back in a chair in a corner, wet. He had just wet himself all because he couldn't get up. Well, I didn't know what to do. So I looked up there in the closet and I found some of uh, some old clothes. Mm -hmm. I got him cleaned up and I put him over on the bed, me and my husband. Put him over <coughs> on the bed, put those clothes on him, got him all washed and dried. And I told Alex, I said, Alex, you go ahead down to the house. And I said, a little heater downstairs in this room here. I had already buried the other lady that I had here. And I said, turn that heater on so it'd be warm for him. And he came on down here and the, the people in the ambulance called me and told me that they'd be a little late because it, there was an accident on the highway. And they finally got there and they took him and they brought him here. And I kept him. He didn't want to leave. When his sister came back home, he didn't want to leave. And one day, he was down on the floor or something, or he got on the floor. And uh, he said something. My husband said, well, you can't talk to her like that, as nice as she is to you. And I would give him his breakfast and fix his food for him all the time, you know. And then finally, when his sister came home, he had to leave, go home. He said, I don't want to go home. He said, this is the best place I've ever stayed since I... <laughs> he said, I didn't have a better place to stay when I had both of my legs. I said, well, they're coming for you. Let's see, who was the minister out there to the church? Oh, Lord. So when you were a little girl, did you go to Mount Calvary? Yeah. Okay. I got my start, start. I was christened out there. Well, who baptized you? Well, I was I baptized in the Methodist church after I got married down there. Okay. Because I got married in the parsonage. Okay. Down there. Okay. And. Um, but going back to School Street, can you remember any other people that live there? On School Street. Mm-hmm. Out here. Lady out there by the name of Miss Georgia Chambers. She lived out on School Street. And um, Sister Variety, Mabel Payne, but they always call her sister. She related to this lady next door here. And Louis Variety, they lived on School Street too. But they all have gone. All have gone. So was it like farmland there or? No, just houses. Just houses. No farmland. Did most of them belong to Mount Calvary? 
Yes, some of them did and some didn't. Some didn't go. I don't know how you manage when you can't go to church. <laughs> so what was it like living around here, say, in the 1940s, 1950s? Things have really changed a lot. Was it mostly farmland or? Yeah, my father had a farmland. He had a cornfield back up there. And we raised pigs, cows. And my grandfather, when he passed, he had a horse. And my daddy kept the horse. And then eventually, my daddy wanted to get rid of the horse. So a man in Alexander bought the horse. <laughs> her name was Maud. <laughs> During the war, did you have to ration any? Were you, did you have to use ration coupons or anything? I think for shoes, I'm not sure. But they were rationed. How about food? Some, some food, we had food stamps. We had food stamps for some food. But most of it you raised here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. my dad raised. We were well fed and well looked after because Mama stayed home. And you had a farm? Yes. So that we made had, a difference? Mama used to make that butter and we had cream and butter. Get up in the morning and, you know, fried potatoes and onions, hot rolls. I got Mama's recipe in that now for rolls. I haven't made rules for many a day now. So did you ever go into Washington, D.C. at all? Once in a while. Yes, I, I tell you what, while I was looking for a job, uh, I went into one, I worked for Census Bureau for a while, on temporary work, at the temporary work, and I worked for Census for them. And then there was a business school, Hawkins Business School. I went there and I took more English and real estate and I took some history too and I learned to use that, um, oh what is that thing you use, use one hand? Stenography? Typewriter? No, not the typewriter. The court stenography yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I learned to use that. I said, oh, well, Hawkins Business School. <laughs> you know, I didn't go to high school, but I tell you what, I picked up everything I could get. <laughs> and then I got a job with Census Bureau. Uh, what was that thing? And we would sit down there and punch those cards punch those cards and the supervisor would walk up and down the hall every day and she said okay you're falling behind Edna Richards you got to you got to make punch more cards than that now was this during segregation uh, I think it was so you were working with whites too or no this man had a black school Hawkins business school uh-huh. And uh, then we went to Census Bureau. One day my sister-in-law, she went over there too because they were hiring. And she came out as I was going in. And she said to me, they're only hiring those that have had experience. So if you haven't had no experience, she said, no point in you going. I said, well, I'm going because the good Lord telling me to go, and I'm going. <laughs> I went on in there. Honey, when they looked at my paper and thing that I had, key punch operator, that's okay. what it was. They take that paper in there, and they looked at it, carried it in the back, and come back. They said, if you are interested, come back Monday morning and bring a doctor's statement. I said, oh Lord, go tell me I'm gonna be hired. <laughs> and did I did, I went back there and I took that doctor's statement and I got hired. And she said to me, you know, she said, 
I don't see how you got hired and you didn't go to high school and I did. I said, well, it's all up here. So why'd you need a doctor's note? Huh? What was the doctor's note about? My health. Saying you're okay. Mm-hmm. And I stayed there till that temporary work was over. And the, and the work we had was round the reflecting pool. You know where all the chair blossom? Uh -huh. That's where I would go every morning. So what year was this? Do you remember? Huh? What year was this? Oh, my Lord, no. That was before I went to Luby Jackson. Okay. Uh-huh. So this is during segregation. Uh-huh. So what would you do at the reflecting pool? You would go up to people and talk to them? No, that's where the building was, where I worked. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's where the building was located, around the reflecting pool out there. How did the whites treat you when you were working? Well, they treated me fine. Because the girls used to say to me, they said you never put on any makeup or anything like that. I said, I don't put that stuff on my face. <laughs> <laughs> they said, why? I said, because I just don't like it on there. But I got all smart one morning. I said, mm -hmm, I'm going to fix them today. I don't know who I was riding with at that time. I put on some makeup, some lipstick, and went in there. And when I walked in there, the girl looked at this. Look who is here. Look what she got on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember any times in your life when um, there were issues of segregation or where you felt like you were being judged by the color of your skin? Everybody loved me. And right at my church right now, 